The remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Paul have crossed the Cape York Peninsula overnight and in their wake over the coming couple of days they will be bringing some heavy rainfall to far north Queensland which we'll be talking about in this video. We're also going to be talking about a developing tropical low on the Coral Sea and also a developing tropical cyclone in the Arafura Sea north of the Northern Territory. We'll be talking about both systems. They are low chances of formation but we'll still be discussing why they are making it into the video and worth talking about. If you haven't already then please do consider watching the winter weather forecast at the end of this video and also go and to subscribe to the second channel Cyclones Extra for more cyclone coverage around Australia and the world. Starting things off, of course, with far northern Queensland, we're taking a look at this bench, a bunch of thunderstorms through here. These are the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Paul. They have tracked through the Solomon Sea and the Coral Sea very slowly over the past 48 hours, and they're now into the Gulf of Carpentaria. And over the coming couple of days, they will continue to intensify, uh, albeit very slowly, but they will still continue to intensify and will likely be the precursor thunderstorms to the next tropical low that's going to be forming uh, throughout the Arafura Sea which we will be talking about in just a second, but we will take a look at rainfall for far northern Queensland first. There is going to be some scattered showers throughout there throughout the course of today, especially the further north that you get, the showers will be intensifying. I'll be using the Access G3 model for this forecast if it wants to load in, but it doesn't look like it's going to load in. There we go, yeah. So some scattered showers throughout the course of today. Nothing crazy, nothing too heavy, uh, and they will be falling probably um, later on in the afternoon and evening. And then tomorrow morning, there'll be some heavy rainfall uh, to start things off for areas between Townsville up towards Cooktown before the rainfall contracts further north and starts to ease off for that area. Now I did say yesterday that the rainfall pattern had shifted significantly further north and that is the case as well with this morning's forecast. Uh, the Cassowary Coast and the Daintree Rainforest are very much out of the woods in terms of heavy rainfall uh, by the looks of things. It's just going to be Monday evening and Tuesday morning where the heavy rainfall will be falling around the Cairns and Townsville area but for Townsville especially Actually, I'm not expecting much rainfall at all. In fact, 25 millimetres tops of that area. But around Cairns in Innisfail, Tully, or up towards Port Douglas, there could be up to 50 millimetres falling. So some significant rainfall is possible there in a very short amount of time. So the risk of flash flooding remains minor, but it certainly still is there. But for those folk in far north Queensland, north of Cooktown, up towards Lockhart River, uh, Moomba, and then Thursday Island, there will be some heavy rainfall over the course of the next couple of days, right through Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Basically, all of the rainfall that was on the forecast for the Cairns area has moved about to 100 or 150 kilometers further north and we're impacting areas around there. Time to take a look at the tropical low that's going to be developing in the Arafura Sea that's around the Indonesian uh, sort of area. And it's a very weird spot for a tropical low to be developing, but you can see on Thursday, we're really starting to get a defined spin up starting to occur here. Uh, not quite with cyclonic winds yet, but it will be getting quite close to that and certainly some strong wind gusts, that's for sure. And this will be happening at Friday morning. There'll be extra updates as well, so make sure you are subscribed to the Cyclones Extra channel. There's a link in the iCard just above right now and also in the description. Let's see if we can hit. 200 subscribers today uh, and then yeah take a look at this tropical cyclones slow development i mean it really does take its time from thursday into friday um and yeah it barely gets to cyclone status it does very briefly around saturday evening by the looks of things uh the eastern bf also not very keen on this system anymore but the gfs still remains confident that a tropical low is going to be developing and that's a little bit hard to see but it is actually happening on the cape york peninsula at this time so a tropical low is going to form regardless of what actually happens here. I mean, the models are working very slowly today, but um, you get the idea that there is a little bit of a swirl trying to develop here around Weeper, uh, that sort of area. It's very brief, but it does still happen. The Axis is kind of the only one supporting a full-blown tropical cyclone at this time. They're still calling for probably a Category 2 strength tropical cyclone as well. Probably around Saturday evening, it will be at peak intensity um, and then, yeah, dying off by around Monday morning due to unfavorable wind shear and also some very dry dry air that this tropical cyclone will be wrapping into its core, which as we discussed yesterday, was going to mean very hostile conditions for tropical cyclone intensification. And mark my words, it will struggle in the conditions that it has. But nonetheless, it's looking relatively healthy by the looks of things. It's got a healthy forecast this weekend before it comes pretty close to the Northern Territory and starts to die off there. 
In terms of impacts for Darwin, I'm going to say that the impacts there will be quite minimal um, outside of rainfall. I'm not expecting anything significant through there. And again, that's reciprocated amongst the rainfall forecast. Although there will be a lot of rainfall around the tropical cyclones core, if it does actually form, I mean, that's kind of the uh, million dollar question right now that will be answered probably Tuesday or Wednesday is will this tropical cyclone form? We'll find out, as I said, Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe Thursdays. So we'll have to give it till maybe mid to late this week. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be a different difficult system to forecast, but I'm very confident that it will actually happen at this time. And we're at least going to see a tropical low or a tropical low like system spin itself up here in the Arafura Sea. That is all but guaranteed at this time. Um, but yeah, in terms of impacts for Darwin, maybe 15 millimeters of rainfall. So nothing crazy through there. Uh, null and buying up towards Cape Wessel as well. Significant amounts of rainfall, but again, nothing crazy. And the Axis G3 always overestimates on the rainfall front. So yeah, I would be taking that with a huge pinch of salt. 600 millimeters is very very unlikely to happen at this time but considering how the system looks right now I mean this is just a bunch of thunderstorms but it is the precursor energy for this tropical low and there's also a lot of thunderstorm activity across Indonesia and PNG um, I would not be surprised if this does actually become a tropical cyclone just considering the amount of energy it's going to have access to um, considering the energy that it's got right now around the center so this will be a very interesting tropical cyclone to track and I can't wait to be tracking it with you so make Make sure you are subscribed and as i've been saying for the last couple of days there's this big ball of energy over the south pacific right now and that's going to be driving some tropical cyclone activity through there both the eastern river and the axis the axis g3 model especially are calling for tropical cyclone activity in the south pacific in specifically the coral sea from around wednesday onwards you can be seeing a tropical low starting to develop in the solomon sea at this time before entering the coral sea around thursday morning ish or thursday afternoon by the looks of things and it remains weak, but it still intensifies throughout the course of Thursday and Friday as another tropical low tries to develop between Vanuatu and Fiji. And it looks like this system here does have a slight chance of becoming a tropical cyclone as it does intensify. It's going to be a very broad system by the looks of things, but as it heads for New Caledonia and Vanuatu, it looks like we have a dual tropical low, maybe a tropical cyclone threat out of one of these systems before Sunday evening, Monday morning, they go through what we call the Fujiwara effect and join together. The Eastern Bloc of calling it for these systems to develop more independently from each other. And you can see from Saturday onwards, we do have a tropical low start or two tropical lows actually developing in the Coral Sea, two very solid tropical lows developing in the Coral Sea. And the GFS model also calling for a singular tropical low developing in the Coral Sea. But Saturday morning, looking very good for the Northern one uh, by the looks of things. And they do stay far far away from each other or far enough away from each other that at least this one here can get to cyclone status and then this one down here even though it remains very messy throughout its lifespan and looks like it's going to be more frontal uh, than most things it does still get cyclone winds as blasts south of Fiji so for Vanuatu and New Caledonia it'll be a very good idea to keep watching the forecast right now these systems are very little threat to the uh, Queensland coastline in fact it's probably not worth worrying about either of these systems to the Queensland coastline but again it's something that we will be watching very closely and I do advise you if you do live in uh, Queensland especially between Cairns down towards Bundaberg that you watch the forecast very closely because you're not going to get a cyclone coming ashore but you will be getting some significant waves which we can take a look at right now I mean wave heights in the Coral Sea will be significantly elevated throughout the week and you're talking up towards four meters uh, so yeah dangerous rip currents can be expected it will be some pretty hazardous sea conditions uh, along the Queensland coastline also the northern New South Wales coastline as well. So make sure you are staying very safe there. Um, and yeah, rainfall accumulation. I mean, you really hard to predict rainfall uh, from the outer bands of these tropical cyclones, considering we don't know where they're going to be tracking. But in terms of rainfall accumulation on the Queensland coastline, it will be negligible at best. So not really worth worrying about. For New Caledonia and Vanuatu, nothing crazy either uh, in terms of maximum rainfall. These are going to be some quick moving systems. They're going to be very messy. They're going to be badly organized. And that's even if they do form as well. So we're going to have to wait till maybe uh, Wednesday or Thursday morning to really get a good idea on what's going to be happening in regards to these systems. But at this stage, I would not be surprised if we get one further tropical low or tropical cyclone in the South Pacific. There is a lot of thunderstorm activity through the South Pacific right now, which you can see in the center of your screen, um, circling around it with the cursor. So it would not take much for these thunderstorms to start spinning themselves up. And they do look quite healthy at this time. So we'll just 
just have to wait and see in regards to these systems. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this morning's weather update. Thank you so much for the support on the channel recently. Make sure to watch the winter weather forecast. I'm going to link it at the end of the video. And I'm also going to link it in the description. Subscribe to the second channel, Cyclones Extra. There's a link on screen right now. And also a link in the description. Uh, the support on that channel really does mean a lot. I'm trying to grow that into becoming a global cycling um, tracking service. Uh, so if that is your cup of tea, then make sure you are subscribed. I've got some grand plans. And also throughout winter, we're going to be working on a weather email subscription system. I'm not sure if I've got the funds to really support that right now, but I'm going to try my absolute best to make that a possible thing for Australia. Uh, maybe a newsletter to go to people's inboxes. So if you are interested in that, that might be coming probably around June or July, uh, which means I'm going to have to start working on it very, very shortly, but I will get onto that. So yeah, thank you so much for the support on the channel. Here's a look at the channel sponsors. Their name's on screen right now, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.